Henry Ford believed that, like himself, people learn by doing. Ford disliked dead exhibitions of things and wished visitors to see them in action, in their proper settings whenever possible. The museum and village's American Railroad program reflects this philosophy. The three-mile standard gauge private rail line, completed in 1972, surrounds the 92-acre village and is the centerpiece of this impressive railroad presentation. Here at the Ford Museum we do have uh, one steam locomotive that is operational and we have three locomotives that we are in the process of rebuilding. Uh, locomotives were uh, quite popular and, and uh, by, by, by the 1950s uh, they were all but extinct. Very few locomotives remain in operating condition and we're very happy here at Henry Ford to be uh, in the group of people that do have operating steam locomotives. If you've never experienced it, there's nothing quite like the sight and sound of a steam locomotive as it gets underway. Edison is a 35-ton locomotive. It was built by the uh, Henry Ford folks at River Rouge about 1930 as a replica of the Civil War engine, a typical of uh, a Mason built Civil War engine. Uh, it's by standards a steam locomotive, a pretty small locomotive. It won't pull a lot of cars, so we have uh, four or five car passenger cars that we can pull here, and that's about the extent of the maximum number of cars we can pull with it. For many visitors, the first glimpse of one of the largest collections of authentic buildings, materials, and activities illustrating the industrial and cultural development of our country comes from the vantage point offered by riding the rails. Keeping a steam locomotive like the Edison fed and watered requires a lot of behind-the-scenes effort by a dedicated staff of railroad professionals. About 6.30 in the morning, the fireman is here and he prepares the, the uh, firebox and gets a few fires going in it and uh, goes out on a train about 8.45 and starts running the trip at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the last scheduled trip is 5 o'clock in the afternoon and it comes in and we bring it in for the uh, daily inspection and uh, put the coal on it, make sure everything that uh, was uh, troublesome during the day is repaired and, and uh, the engine is ready for the next day. In the glory days of steam, a locomotive required one day of service for every day of operation. The roundhouse was the central location for inspecting, cleaning, adjusting, and repairing locomotives. To facilitate these requirements for their own equipment, the village added a roundhouse, completed June 10, 2000. Originally owned by the Detroit, Toledo, and Milwaukee Railroad, the Roundhouse was constructed in 1884 in Marshall, Michigan. Operated until the early 1930s, it was ultimately abandoned. The Roundhouse was purchased by the village and reconstruction began in July 1999, incorporating salvaged parts from the original. Now visitors can experience a fully operating Roundhouse complete with a machine shop and antique machinery. There are probably about 10,000 roundhouses throughout the United States in uh, the heyday of railroading, about 1920. Of course, with the diesel locomotive, uh, the roundhouse work was no longer necessary. So in the 50s, roundhouses became obsolete and many of them were uh, demolished as time went on. Besides servicing the mechanical requirements of the Edison, the roundhouse houses the 171-ton 442 Atlantic built by American Locomotive in 1901. A high-speed passenger locomotive capable of speeds approaching 100 miles per hour. Three other locomotives are currently undergoing reconstruction and repair. The Torch Lake, the only remaining example in the world of an 1873 Mason Bogey 064T engine, and a Fate Root Heath Company 1927 Plymouth switch engine 
named after Plymouth, Ohio, where it was built. Old number no. seven, an 1893 Baldwin 440 American, which was Henry Ford's favorite personal locomotive when he owned the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railroad. Additionally, there is a crane which was designed for use in case of a train derailment in the Detroit and Windsor Tunnel. Also on display outside the roundhouse is a 060-1914 Baldwin switching engine used by Michigan Alkali Company near Rogers City, which was acquired from the Detroit and Mackinac Railway. Roundhouses were originally uh, built to do uh, low maintenance on locomotives, daily inspections, and also as a, a garage, so to speak, to keep the locomotives in while they're not in use. Many of the railroad uh, had uh, round houses that were open 24 hours a day and they had machinists and mechanics that would go over the locomotives when they'd come in after a run for daily maintenance and also the monthly uh, inspections and and uh, quarterly inspections were also done in the roundhouse. Uh, usually attached to the roundhouse would be a larger building, which would be the machine shop itself, where very heavy repairs would be taken care of. A major cause of excitement at the new roundhouse was the impending reunion of the Torch Lake chassis with the drive wheels. This whole casting is all new. All these are cast new. Steam pipes. It actually has new axles on it. It has taken several years of careful disassembly, machining, and replacement of parts to get to this big moment. Everyone's attention is focused on the Torch Lake as it is slowly towed out of the protective shelter of the roundhouse onto the turntable. With great care, this tank engine, so-called because the engine and tender are one piece, is rolled into position to await the arrival of its drive wheels. Hydraulic jacks are installed at the rear to prevent a possible tip over as the engine is raised. A large crane is firmly anchored next to the torch lake and its heavy cable secured around the boiler to support the considerable weight of the engine. The temporary wheels are removed and stored on another siding. Leaving the engine suspended. Next, the loader returns to the roundhouse to retrieve the drive wheels. The intricate assembly is gingerly moved onto the turntable and brought into position for the long-awaited reunion of the chassis. The crew uses extreme care in inching the wheels into just the right position before lowering the chassis back onto the drive wheels. A sigh of relief and words of congratulation were heard as the two components successfully came together.
After years of planning and hard work, the Torch Lake is back on its wheels and ready for final reassembly in the comfort of the roundhouse. This locomotive is one of a kind. Uh, it was built in 1873 by the Mason Works in Taunton, Massachusetts under the Fairley patent. Um, it was delivered to the Calumet and Hecla in 1873. What makes this locomotive so unique is that the engine truck swivels underneath the boiler, allows it to negotiate tight curvatures and uneven trackage. They had uh, six locomotives similar to this one. This is the, the lone survivor of those six. And as far as we know, it's the lone surviving example of any of the Mason built Fairley locomotives. This should last me the rest of my lifetime. Yeah, if, if, we, uh, if we operate it and maintain it in a careful manner, we shouldn't have to do anything like this for another 30 or 40 years. As you complete your ride around the village's private rail line, you can now appreciate the function of the roundhouse and how much planning and hard work goes into keeping the trains running. Thank <laughs> you.